If you're going to shoot, shoot, don't talk. everybody welcome back to the spaghetti western jamboree the jamboree where what do we do we watch and talk about spaghetti westerns of course uh tonight's movie is uh 1975's four of the apocalypse by the notorious the infamous the godfather of gore now you see now it's like when i wish i had like a microphone close because he's one of those guys that when i mention his name i always want to say it like in a in a in an ominous way Lucio Fucci. Uh, best known, of course, for, you know, uh, The Godfather of Gore, the guy who gave us a Zombie, uh, City of the Living Dead, uh, 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 The Beyond, uh, House by the Cemetery. Um, some really dark and fucked up movies. And guess what? Tonight's movie is really dark and it's really fucked up. And there is a link to it below. You can click on it, and it will take you to a completely uncut, unedited version of uh, of the movie, which, like I said, is very really dark and fucked up. So <laughs> you, you've been warned. Anyway, what's up, Sim? I see you, man. I'll let you get it. Uh, but, yeah, let me bring on my co-hosts, of course. First and foremost, my boy, your boy, Matt. What's going hey, on? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? <laughs> I'm yeah, chilling, man. Uh, chill, I, I watched chillin', it a few, man. A, few years, a few days ago. Um, pretty crazy flick. Uh, you could definitely tell it was faulty, though. And, uh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> man. And then, of course, there is the great, the one and the only, Preston Acevedo. What is up, boy? This was the worst goddamn movie I've ever seen before in my life. Like it was uh, the worst movie you've ever seen. Like it was the exact opposite of an uplifting movie. <laughs> and right, right when you think it's as bad as it can possibly get, it gets worse. It gets worse. Yeah, yeah, totally. The, it's it's not a bad movie. It's actually a really good one. It's just very unpleasant. Well, another thing too, I noticed they had they had like some obviously recognizable American actors in there. And then they had the Italian guys, but the Italian guys were obviously dubbed over. You know what I'm saying? It was it was it was kind of a oh, weird. Everybody mix. was dubbed over. Every um that that that's a thing about uh, Italian movies from like the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They were all shot without sound, which yeah. is interesting. The reason they did that was so that way they're like, oh well, we're gonna that way you know we'll just dub it 
and we can have it for like every country, right? Uh, but that meant that while they were making the movie, they were shooting the movies like silent films. And I think that is one of the reasons the Italian movies have like the visual uh, look that they have. And then of course we got to bring on Pops. What's going on, man? What you say? <laughs> what you say? I can't. Didn't quite catch that. See, I muted you before, but now you muted yourself, son. Weird. There you go. Weird, because didn't say I was muted. Anyway, what's up? Um, what's going on, man? Look, I thought this movie was hilarious. <laughs> I will. Put it in my comedy western hall of fame That's over there up. with all the Terrence Hill movies. That's I fucked up. It. I thought it was hilarious. What can I do? Oh man. Um, but I did I made a comment in your chat. Obviously, I want to go ahead and say it again. There's nobody in the old west named Stubby that's got all ten of their fingers. Um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a weird name for this dude, right? Maybe I mean, they was... gave him that name because he had all of his fingers. Maybe it's because yeah, he had like a really I mean, tiny like, penis. I think it's because he had a tiny penis, they call yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fabio Testi, man, come on! You know he was packing a rabbit. <laughs> and then, of course, we have the immensely talented, the of course, always awesome Simon Sim Poitier. What is going? Actually, on? eating spaghetti. Oh, nice! <laughs> spaghetti. Exactly. Right? spaghetti no, right? Yeah. How apropos. <laughs> <laughs> and and I have to say, a slight resemblance between our boy Sim and Michael J. Pollard. <laughs> slight, slight uh, 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 resemblance. Uh, oh man, the, there are stories from the making of this movie that are that are that are pretty interesting. Uh, I have the hold on a sec. I, why did I not have have this Dude, there was, ready there beforehand? Was some very some interesting characters in this show. There were some very interesting characters in this movie. You had oh, Chaco. You you had you had um, what was the, the the crazy dude Joe? You, I mean, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was there was some interesting characters in this movie. I had it. I actually didn't even pause it at any point. I watched it from beginning to end. It was so hilarious. I like how it opens up where it's just like narrating. You know what I mean? Like right dude. right when it starts. You know, setting up the um. Look, I caught a big animal. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Opens in uh. In you Utah, know, Utah, Utah, Utah flats. Like I, I called all of it as I was watching. Once it, it went down that road, I was like, "Nah, this is like, this is going to get really, really more fucked up, right?" And when he came big, back, like inside with that big clump of meat, I was like, "Nah, you yeah. cut that out of that, dude." I was, I was like, "That's cool." Like, oh, yeah. And I, I knew your boy was going down somebody's gullet. Well, I knew your boy I, when he started handing out peyote. I'm like, he's going to have, he's going to have his way with that chick. <laughs> so, and I was like, yeah, I knew it. I was like, no, nah, this is this is gonna be yeah. the worst fucking thing ever. Yeah. Uh, brutal. For the apocalypse is a very, it's a cool ass name, but it's very deceiving. <laughs> it's yeah. well, that's the thing. It's like it's it's so appropriate for the for this stream because of course you know we've kind of like switched between uh, every, you know every other week we do a horror movie, then we do a spaghetti western, and this is not a horror movie. I wouldn't clap, put this in the same category as other horror spaghettis, you know, like And God Said to Cain, which we did, or uh, Django uh, Kill, If You Live, Shoot, or uh, The Stranger's Gun Down. Yeah, this is the type of movie you watch. Like, those are actual horror movies. This is the type of movie that you watch when you're undecided about taking, like, committing suicide. <laughs> and you watch just just to push you right over the edge. Now I will see that dude with the guns in the front. Like yeah. dude is like that would be the coolest comic book character. You know what I'm saying? With the bandana and it's oh. red teardrops coming down. Yeah. I was like, nah, that's well they're not sweet. teardrops. I know, I know what they were, but it looked cool. They're like crosses. I was like, yeah. Yeah. They're crosses. Oh, it was? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me uh hold on a sec. Let me uh, get a cool poster right there. What's up, Oliver? Yeah, there's a poster. Yeah, what up, Ollie? 
I, I got me an avatar. Just for the, I got me an avatar just for this show now, Brian. Uh-huh. Oh hell yeah! There you go. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't see. I can't. I can't. I can't see it. There's a new uh, sheriff in town. Well, there's a new sheriff in town, and he's like, you know, s- slowly torturing, yeah, fucking, skinning fucking sheriffs alive. And when uh, sheriffs just like yeah. eating like beans and like biscuits and shit, while the whole town's getting all fucked up, you know? Yeah. Um. That, of course, is a really memorable scene. But, yeah, Chaco is basically like the Antichrist in this. He's one of the most memorable villains in uh, spaghetti movie, uh, spaghetti Western history. And that is in large part due to the actor that, that plays him, Thomas Millian. Thomas Millian was originally of Cuban extraction, right? Went, moved from, I think he was born in Cuba, uh moved to new york i think with his family i think probably like around the time there was like you know the revolution and shit i think his family was one of the families that got the hell out of there and uh studied in new york uh at the prestigious uh, acting academy uh with uh, stella adler and those people and uh really couldn't get a foothold uh couldn't get any work in america uh moved to italy and became a superstar uh, alternately playing heroes and villains. Uh, always great as uh, as a hero, uh, whether it's a comedic hero or a traditional hero, but always especially good as a villain. Um, he, like, for instance, like that, the entire look of this character, that was invented by him. Mm-hmm. Uh, the crosses under the eyes, he says that that was kind of inspired by the swastika on... Um, uh, uh, Charles Manson's head. And he said that, I mean, you know, he, uh, he's somebody that was, that, was, that was known to be difficult to work with sometimes because he was a method actor. Mm-hmm. And so he went to like a really dark place for, for this character. I mean, since it's Italian, I would, I would have thought like Pagliacci. When I first saw it, I thought Pagliacci because he had those type of like white, uh, black thing underneath his eyes. Yeah. It's such a great look. Like I'm seriously going to use that. that looks right, right. This, 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 the sister, the sisters in Blood Run Two have them. Remember, Brian? Yeah, my uh, my, my uh, crow script. You know, the medieval one, the crow mm-hmm. stained glass. I was gonna, I was gonna appropriate that look because it's such a genius, cool, freaking look. Oh, it is. It's badass, dude. Yeah, for sure. And uh, he was also one of those people who uh, was took, who took the role so seriously that you know. He was very often when you have actors together, everybody wants to get along. And so you have the guy that's playing the villain. You have the guy who's playing the hero and they buddy up and hey, 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 let's have a laugh and everything. And then then we'll go do our thing. And he was not about that. At not all. when you're a method so actor. When we're, we're talking <laughs> method, yes. like, so did he actually have his way with the other actress or was he? No. No, not <laughs> no, not to that other? extent. Not method to that extent. <laughs> but, but I mean, you guys all know what method acting is, right? It's yeah, pretty yeah, famous or right. infamous. Lawrence Olivier very famously dis- was just dismissive of it because he's like Jean Luc Picard was a method actor. Because uh, my buddy was Does on he? the set, and he wouldn't break character as Xavier on the Wolverine set. Like, <laughs> yeah. interesting. Charles, interesting. crazy. I mean, I know, there, there, there I know was, he comes from a Shakespearean background, and those guys are basically trained to turn it on and off, right? So you step into character, you step out of character. There was Jim Carrey on Men on the Moon that, that you know, we heard a lot of stories about that one. Oh, yeah, Jim Carrey. He had that big public display where he uh, he had a fight with, do you remember that? Like he was yeah, they were doing a press like conference. Jerry and, Lawler, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, Bal- oh, Kilmer. did he recreate the Jerry Lawler thing? The, uh, yeah, yeah, he did. I yeah. Really, that's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah, um, and that's one of the things that even like um, everybody that talks about it that had to meet him on set, they had to address him as the character, otherwise he would lose his shit. Val Kilmer was like that on the set of the doors. They right. Chappelle mm-hmm. said it. He goes, I Val went Kilmer there. Val like, a notorious dick. Everybody, nobody, like he's one of those people, like there's certain people like Boris Karloff, you cannot find anybody that not only – uh, you when you when you watch Val Kilmer's documentary, you can't find. 
coolest guy ever. When you watch Val Kilmer's documentary, like, it's it's obvious that he's a that he's one of those actors that loves to smell his own farts. Yeah, you know, oh because God. he graduated from Juilliard. You know what I'm saying? And Notorious he was like, dick. Notorious dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, like, like, you Gossman? can't find a single. You can't find anybody to say a nice word about him. Basically, no, you can't. I love Val Kilmer. I thought Val Kilmer was an amazing actor. Yeah, you know? greatest he's fucking a, uh, Willow, man. ever. Yeah. Willow died too. You guys hear Willow died? Uh, Warwick mm-hmm. Davis. Yeah. Did he really? Oh yeah. Wow. Like, yeah, like a day ago. What's up, Scotsman? Well, he had nope. a pretty good run, didn't he? Yeah. Scots, that last and, Willow uh, movie, dog shit. I didn't watch it. Only mentions Vamos Samatar, Vamos Samatar, Compañeros. That's one of the movies actually uh, that I that I wanted to do uh, next. Yeah. Uh, like I said, Thomas Million, brilliant, brilliant actor. Uh, very, very versatile, a uh, huge star in Italy. And then once he became a huge star in Italy, he was like, okay, now I'm going to move back to Hollywood. And he did. And like, nobody knew who he was. Failed. Miserable. Cause, <laughs> yeah. Cause Hollywood was watching. They weren't watching <laughs> Italian movies. So did he go back to Italy when he failed in America? Or? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because I think by that time, the, I think the Italian movie industry had already died at that point and if it, if it hadn't died it was on its way out and like today for instance there is no italian movie industry uh it's only a uh, television um you know but i mean you know that's what happens uh you look at japan as another, another country that had a movie industry that died uh there are a lot of countries that had movie industries that just dried up because people preferred to watch you know big glossy uh, hollywood movies instead of local products and then Americans, of course, only want to watch American movies. So you know, uh, it just uh, it just it just dried up. But thank God they made like a million of these movies, right? And right. Uh, you know, uh, with the horror, they made a million of those. Made a million of these spaghettis. Um, this came out in '75, so this is also what's known as uh, a, one of the Twilight spaghettis. The Twilight Spaghettis would include this, California with Giuliano Gemma, and uh, Kaoma with uh, uh, Franco Nero. That one's pretty good. <laughs> Just well, quick question on that. Did, did you guys see the Ballad of Buster Scrubs? Yeah. Yeah, no. that movie was dope. <laughs> oh, Brian. So good. <laughs> it's on my list. I don't have an excuse for not having seen it. Uh, you're yeah. going to see that there's one of the characters in there that's de- definitely Lucky Luke. I like Liam Neeson. Oh yeah, in the beginning, right? Yeah, 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 dude. It's 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 technically like a wink. At, it's literally a wink at Lucky Luke. The colors, how he is using. I know the character energy. you're talking about too. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've yeah. seen the clip where he kills Camp Clancy Brown by just like oh, good. slamming on the table. So good, and then like the the <laughs> Liam Neeson one's fucking brutal, bro. I, I don't know if you'd consider it a western or like a spaghetti western, but it's definitely the vibe they're trying to give with it. Oh, I don't yeah. know oh you see the influence. Yeah. You see the influence of so much contemporary shit. Good off uh, 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 anthology, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was a fresh, it was like a breath of fresh air seeing that. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. I've, I've been wanting to see it. It's just one of those movies where that's in that pile of like I have no good excuse for. Not right, it's an it. anthology, like dude. It. You're gonna love it. Yeah, it's no, a big I comic know, book, I know, dude. I know. I, know. I and, think and the next people- series. Mm-hmm. I'm, I think the next series I'm going to watch is going to be. Uh, Captain Simeon in the Space Monkey series. What? Like, what? Yeah. What is this? I haven't heard about this. You never heard of Captain yeah. Simeon in the Space no. Space Monkey? Sounds, sounds no. interesting, though. That sounds like it's my shit, you, though. Yeah. You, the gorilla guy, yeah. have never heard of Captain yeah. Simeon in a Space it's Monkey. Not, it's not, wait, it's not the character that's from Dexter's Laboratory, right? Like the Super Monkey? This is from 1997. It's, it's amazing, dude. Like, it's incredible. Okay. Like, okay, because I love me some Super Monkey. I, I don't know if you remember, you know, they did a great Marvel. Concert. It's on Tubi, by the way, the whole I, series. I, I did see really? that. Like, I didn't yeah. watch the entire thing, but I remember seeing that. Yeah. What's it called? I want to watch Faust. Captain, Captain Simeon Captain... and the Space Monkeys. Just Google <laughs> yeah, it. You'll find. You'll find. Has it. anybody seen it? Anybody nah, besides me? Seen it. <laughs> Holy shit! I did. Dude, you guys. I, are I did. Insane. I saw the episode, but I never watched the full thing. Though. Anybody but Sim. Because Sim yeah. and Simeon's kind of pretty close. I think that's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> oh, wow. This looks cool. Was, it was there a toy line for this or something? Yep. I, 
I think there was, yeah. But you know what's even cooler is that it actually had a cool storyline and amazing animation. Adding that to my Tubi. It's on my Tubi. Thanks for thanks for the uh, for the recommend, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying about about uh, about Million, he was uh, yeah could 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 be a, a little a little difficult to work with, uh, according to some of his co-stars. Uh, then of course you have Fabio Testi, and Fabio Testi was like a uh, matinee idol, basically, huh. and. Let's take a look at his handsome, sexy face there. Yeah, kind of I mean, like uh, Carradine a little bit. Well, uh, yeah, well I mean, uh, more, more, more minty fresh, more minty fresh, more modelly, more Tell male modelly. Yeah, and also an absolutely fucking terrific actor. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, the whole time I was looking at that dude, I was like. Like if he moved to America, like he would have had a career. <laughs> so oh, for like... sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he, if he had learned English. Oh, that's another thing I should mention about about uh, Thomas Million too. Uh, the dubbing, for instance, in by all the actors in this, it's done by the usual people that dub these movies. Mm. But with Thomas Million, he did his own dubbing. Well, right? so did the other guy too. The drunk. Because I've and seen that dude in other movies. Like, no, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, in, he's, in, uh, he's in Scrooge. Remember, he's in the sewer, all frozen and shit. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a, a big character guy. actor. He's in a let fucking me, movie. Let me Look. check out my. He's so young in here, too. I can hardly recognize him, you know? And he's just like a fiend, an alcohol fiend. He's like beyond like alcoholic, dude. But, hey, uh, one, of the water. That, one of the ones that one, <laughs> one of the ones that I thought was pretty impressive is that Terrence Hill used to do his own dubbing in Italian and in English and in French. That's pretty yep. cool. <laughs> yep, and German. Mm -hmm. I'll yep. do it myself. He was like, hey, you know, yeah, because you thought that his voice was key, his deliverance, his delivery, and the voice was key to making him more. I agree. Immersible. My superpowers. Yeah. If you could do he it. Tried you know. to get to, he tried to get Bud Spencer to do his own dubbing in English because he, he did speak French a bit. Yeah, no, I would. I would do it. If he I never could. learned though. <laughs> he never nice. learned. He could have been. Uh, that, uh, if, if, uh, they wanted him to play a uh, Pluto in um, mm -hmm. in uh, the uh, Popeye. Robert Altman Popeye movie. Mm, I love that. That would have been fucking amazing. <laughs> that movie so still all the parts it that, would have been the best. It that was a good movie. Yeah, the set design, everything is pops yeah. in there. Everything, like, dude, it was right on, dude. It was like fucking like even olive oil. Olive oil. Did you see? Did you see Reese's pictures of the chick that played olive oil? Like yeah, she's like dude. homeless now with no yeah. teeth. And she's really yeah. as a friend yeah. too well, bro. Get the fuck she's also in the shining, you know? Yeah. 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 And, uh, and one of my favorites, uh, Suburban Commando, which was like Hulk Hogan and Lobo put together. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Love that oh movie. yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty dope. <laughs> Undertaker's in there. <laughs> Is he? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've never watched. I don't He's a bounty hunter like Lobo. Scottsman said, like, if you've seen Sim without his shirt off, Simeon is appropriate. Yep. Oh, snap. <laughs> No, because I have hair. God Look. damn. I have chest oh, hair. I'm manly. I ain't no pussy. Oh, dude, I'm like <laughs> half fucking Sasquatch. You know, yeah, I mean, I'm bald as a bat. That's the American Indian. I can't grow up. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, you're fall yeah. Uh, uh, um it's, it, it's, it's great to be manly. Like in, in that respect. <laughs> but not on top of the head. You don't see a lot of bald Indians. You know, from the waist down, I am part monkey, though. Oh, snap. <laughs> uh, I'm part uh, six gorilla, if you will. Part monkey, that means tiny, because the apes have a big one. Well, no. Well, uh, gorillas have, like, very small penises. Yes. No, I mean, hairy. A lot of people are just hairy. like, well, where's this junk? <laughs> like, well, you don't see it. You're like, you're like the Zohan? It's the biggest, the biggest bush. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. got the biggest bush. He was he was funny, man. It's not that big. That's the biggest bush. Ben Stiller. No, it's Adam Sandler. Or Adam Sandler, yeah. And, uh, uh, ben Stiller was the um Blue Steel, the the, the freaking um model one. What was the name of again? Zoolander. Zoolander. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> True. Oh my god. But his his, his best one is uh, Tropic Thunder. Yes. 100%. Oh dude, yeah. 100%. That's his that, that's his that's his like, like to me, Adam Sandler Zohan was like yeah. his best movie. Traffic Thunder is 
It's it, it is for the other one. I'm more partial to Little Nicky and Happy Gilmore personally, but really? I do like the Zohan. I haven't watched either of those. I have like. I'm not a big movies. Adam Sandler fan. Like I've never really. Yeah, the, the one I watched the most was the one. Did you see his new shit? The uh, the Western fiction movie that he did. Mm. Uh, the Western was, that one was badass. The one where he's in space. Yes, yeah, really that one was fucking amazing. Dude. Really, yeah. really good. Yeah, that Space Man. Yeah, I, rec- yeah, I highly cool. recommend it. It's a very good little uh, little movie. It'll make you the one with the soul shit searching too. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, very, very good. It'll fuck with your head a little bit. Damn. Oh yeah, and your heart too. And for people that just join in, yes, I'm eating spaghetti while we're talking about spaghetti western. I, <laughs> I had spaghetti a couple nights ago. We do spaghetti around here, like. Couple times a month, I'm Fucking the spaghetti king. Spaghetti. When, when my wife was pregnant with my my son, I made spaghetti like 40 times. My so like, that's not how you make them Italian, though. You know that, Matt, right? It's <laughs> you can feed them all the spaghetti you want. He turned out to be Italian. <laughs> this is Sicilian part of him. Well, if he did, you might want to ask your wife if you quit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh snap! Oh shit! Oh my god. Hey Papa! Hey, <laughs> oh. Yeah, he always, he always yells at me like this, no. <laughs> He's like, hey daddy. <laughs> let's take a let's Papa. take a quick look at the trailer for Lucio Fulci's four of the apocalypse. Make up your mind. Oh yeah, this song, oh, man. No, Dude, this song was like hippie as fuck in here. Fuck, yeah. I thought they were gonna That's- make like, the four horsemen in here, you know? That's what I was expecting. I yeah. know, me too. Like, I was expecting yes. something cool. And I'm like, what? Horse, baby, what? Horse, baby, find me up. And, and this is a thing <laughs> about the Twilight Spaghettis, too, is they have these soundtracks where you've got, like, these hippies that are narrating the action as it happens, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, there's a scene in Kaoma where Kaoma has been captured by the bad guys and this uh, pregnant woman that he rescued goes to rescue him. And you hear like this, uh, hi- the hippie chick that, si- that sings on the soundtrack going, go now, save Kioma. <laughs> and funny. you kind of get that here too. You know, where it's like it's it's directly referencing like what you're seeing on the screen or what's happening in the story. In my opinion, this spaghetti western was like somebody trying to make marinara sauce with ketchup. <laughs> oh, and one of the, one of the um, one of the nicknames I heard for spaghetti westerns uh, that I've always loved is peyote westerns, what? right? Because they're so wild and surreal very often, and they have this weird vibe. Uh, and in this, uh, he feeds them peyote. He does. Yeah. yeah. He owes. I oh, knew exactly what was going to happen at that point, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Money. Yeah, I did too. Good for you, my friend. Well, a lunatic who speaks to dead people. Dude, and that's another thing, too. Like, I mean, you talk about committing to a role. He let the dude spit in his mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was oh, like, no way this is going to happen. No, I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's disgusting. Yeah. yeah, check this out. Check this out. Um, data, yeah. I'm sure there was a practical effect in there. Yeah, no, that's 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 for real. And Thomas uh, Million actually. Yeah, that was no fucking practical effect, yeah. dude. That uh, shit was. Oh god, it was nice. uh, um, in his these, mouth. These dudes were like serious. And uh, Millions talks about shooting that scene and how awesome Pollard was, how he was just all like into it. All, he yeah. just took the whole load. You know? Yeah. <laughs> he was so awesome. And he took the whole load of my spit in his mouth. He, loved it. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a good chunk. He even went. <laughs> he was like, ah, oh, <laughs> more. Take three. The female actress, not so much. She's <laughs> <laughs> the green in it. She wouldn't let me, uh, you know, do my thing. <laughs> I'm trying to find, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I downloaded like one of the things that's uh, that's cool is that I can go on tape interwebs and find like the special features that are on the uh, DVDs and the uh, uh, Blu-rays. This is the this is the wait no this wasn't Blue Underground yet this was Anchor Bay right Anchor Bay was the shit 
Yeah, they were. Uh, in the early 2000s, they People started did, putting right? out movies on uh, on DVD that had never even been on VHS, or if they had been on VHS in the United States, they were all chopped up and all fucked up and everything. And one of the first directors whose uh, uh, filmographies they put out on this was uh, Lucio Fulci. And oh. Fulci almost overnight went from hack to genius. It's it's the strangest thing. I've never seen any. I've never seen a filmmaker's reputation change like that suddenly and like that abruptly. I don't. I don't think that's so strange, though. There's plenty of people that that's happened to as long as they have like a lot of talent. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. Well, yeah. No. I know. What you, it's the, that is true. Yeah, they get discovered by uh, later generations. And Fulci, dude. <laughs> How did uh, you do, that? do you want me to spit it in your mouth, Glenn? Huh? <laughs> yes, please do. Oh, that was a. That was. He really fed my. <laughs> my. How do you say? Chacos sadism. Right. Because yeah. they're riffing off of each other. Right. Yeah. So Pollard was going to go, was going to that place, which helped him go even further t- in, in, into, uh, into his character. He was like. He was like a little dog there. Little dog. And I had taken a, a, a sip of whiskey. And I knew instinctively that if I spit in his mouth, pour it out, he, he would want more. Take it. Ew, dog. And I did it. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's in the movie. You know. So. That's something that happened. I don't know the way he was as a as a person, as a character, his problems. He really went there. And uh, and me. I wonder how yeah, many takes they had to do. Uh, <laughs> probably not that many. Probably oh, not that yeah, many. Probably not that many. <laughs> um, you know okay. that's 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 the thing these guys were fucking you know uh I mean, insane I, is what they, they were blasted yeah. out of their mind like you uh, say they, they were fucking uh, you know yeah they were fucked up they were on drugs stuck <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> doing well, actual peyote yeah they were what, what was was the, it was the 70s <laughs> i've funny. always wanted to try peyote but i've heard it like it makes you puke your guts out oh yeah that's shit yourself funny. yeah that's not that too yeah sometimes Damn. yeah same thing with mushrooms Whoa. mushrooms it's it's a coin toss to see if it's going to be shit or puke. Oh, you could. Yeah, and uh, a million in this interview is just like <laughs> he can't like say enough great things about Pollard's performance in this, but because he's like he's so good, he's even better than I am. <laughs> he took the load in the mouth, like you would not he believe. Took it in the load. <laughs> <laughs> So much better hey man, than you. Let's take the team. Uh-huh. It's also fun. Go, go ahead, Sam. I was going to say, he's a swallower, not a spitter. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good spaghetti. <laughs> he's a taker. He was always fond of that. I was That's the moment I knew. He even got there. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> he even has some more. I don't know why. He pulled out a toothbrush in the Wild West. No, he was not going to be Oh, there's that Fabio. Mean? Look at the look at this dude, man. He's like a fucking dilf or a G dilf. Oh, that's that's Stubby. Y- yeah, but the gambler. Stubby. stubby the gambler. And I love like because the beginning to this yeah. is very Fulci like, right? A lot of pain, where yeah. Where you've got uh, Stubby, who's just arrived in town. Uh, when he gets off of the um, of the stagecoach, you see him take out. You know, a lace uh, uh, handkerchief, just kind of dusting himself, right? This is a guy that's all about looking sharp. And, you know, you can't help but think about that later on in the movie and, like, the place that he ends up, right? Um, you know, just completely fucking, uh, uh, um, you know, left, you know, tortured and left to die by uh, this uh, by this uh, maniac. Um and then, of course, you know, he gets locked up with uh, by uh, Donald. That's Donald O'Brien. He's in a ton of spaghetti westerns. <laughs> this <in> guy. <laughs> what was that? This guy's funny. He's just like eating his biscuits and, and beans and gravy. He's just like everyone's getting like massacred out front. 
Yeah, no, he's a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit for sure, right? Yeah. Because what Stubby doesn't realize, he's arrived in town on the very night that the rest of the town is like, you know what? We're fucking cleaning house. Yeah. That is all the people, all the degenerates that have like ruined this town and made it a fucked up place. Yeah, we're going to fuck them up. Yeah. We're just going to form a lynch mob. And, uh, you know, they put on white hoods, <laughs> interestingly <laughs> enough. Right. And uh, go and just start fucking massacring people. And then, you know, these people are locked up. It gets locked up, of course, with Bunny, uh, a, a, a pregnant prostitute, and with a Bud uh, who uh, sees dead people and has uh, lengthy conversations with them. And then, of course, Michael J. Pollard. <laughs> My favorite life. part is when that dude was dying. He was like, no, go sleep with each other. <laughs> well, yeah, the one dude was, you know, he had a funny voice, yeah. <laughs> well, he, you know, you know, he right? wants them to be happy. Uh, because of course he <laughs> betrays them in the in like the worst way possible, but they forgive him, right? Because yeah. they understand how hopeless, how helpless he is. No, you had it right the first time. <laughs> in the in the uh well, well yeah, both really. Uh, you know, in the grips of his, uh, his, uh, alcoholism. alcoholism and, you know, he tries to make it right, but then of course he gets shot in the leg by Chaco for it. And so they're locked up and, uh, it turns out the reason they're locked up is because they're like, okay, well, we're going to kill a bunch of motherfuckers, but we're not going to kill you. Right. Like you're scumbags, but you're not such scumbags that we're just going to fucking blow your brains out or fucking lynch you. And so it opens with this massacre. I love like how the uh, yeah there there's Donald O'Brien, the sheriff chowing down while people are getting their fucking guts blasted out. <laughs> uh, don't you love like how big the fucking um, the squibs are? Right. And this look at that. That's, yeah, that. That's awesome. Seventies, sixties, seventies, and early eighties. Man, they just just everywhere was just thrown down like that. You know the squibs. Uh, for sure. But then it's Fulci, so it has to be like really exaggerated. Yeah. And then you've got Sergio Salvati, who is uh, director of uh, uh, cinema, is of uh, his director of uh, photography, the cinematographer, mm. who always gave his movies this very lush uh, look, right? A lot yeah. of uh, soft lighting and that sort of a thing. Kind of warm. Uh, that's why Fulci's movies uh, look so beautiful. Um, which of course just adds to the fucked upness when you get to like <laughs> yeah you're getting cozy right so so cozy is warm looking and then the evil yep and uh, so yeah uh, Donald O'Brien the sheriff is just like okay now you motherfuckers uh, get, get out of town oh we make sure to rob rob a uh, 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 st stubby first though right he's like oh yeah you got some money on you don't you yeah I'll take that. And uh, off they go. Move, moving on. Right? That yeah, song, man. Good. Good luck trying to get that out of your fucking head. It's the worst yeah. fucking song ever, dude. They had no taste in music back then. Soundtrack well, to this movie was horrible. <laughs> it, well, not the whole soundtrack. It's just like. No, this. no, the whole soundtrack was. <laughs> even had the stubby song. The stubby song. Oh, look, it's not any more a <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, like, like you were saying again, a very uh, a very hippie uh, feel to it. Yes, and Kaoma's like that too. Yep. Uh, uh, as I was saying, go now save Kaoma. Watch out, your brothers are sneaking up on you. Don't trust that. Motherfucker! <laughs> Get off of my Santa! <laughs> yeah, there you go with the big, big old squibs. And uh, Fabio talking about uh, that guy. The guy reminds me of Ray Stevenson, <laughs> right? Yeah, a little. Yeah. Little Pierce Brosnan too, maybe. Lui era un regista difficilissimo. He was an extremely difficult director. Yeah, the reason. Oh yeah, there he goes. Um, yeah. Um, Fulci, of course, was a very fucked up person. Yeah. Uh, straight up misogynist. Everybody says so, right? Hated women. Also really hated pretty boys. Like Fabio Testi. 
uh, hated him on sight because what had happened with Fulci, I know I told the story before, but if you hadn't heard Jesus. it, uh, no, uh, his wife left him for like a, uh, a pretty boy actor, mm. right? The talent. And then the pretty boy actor, <laughs> and she wanted to come back to Fulci. And Fulci, nope. come back to Fulci. So gave her the fucking finger. I'm coming back. And to then Fulci. she went. She she uh she uh deleted herself. She uh damn damn that's horrible. Well, she yeah. knew she made a mistake. And, yeah. <sighs> and one way to fix that. And yeah, well, and Fulci that Fulci never forgave never forgave her for that. Like it fucked him up for like the rest of his life. Oh yeah, there's no coming back from that. Plus, I mean, yeah. did he really want to get with somebody that was that spiteful? We'll go ahead and off herself just to. Well, it just, it, it just, it just really, it just the mother of his children, man. It fucked them up. It fucked them up really nope. bad. And so, um, you know, uh, you know, Fabio has to put up with some shit. But I love what uh, what Million says here. Regista difficilissimo. Yeah, poor Lucio. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lucio. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. <laughs> and of course, we got our song. Everything. You know what it great. reminds me of? That Sunny. reminds me of um. No, the uh. You remember in heavy metal a movie, right? When yeah. the two aliens are coasting through space and they're they're smoking yeah. a huge. <laughs> That's exactly what it reminds me of. <laughs> Fulci of the apocalypse. Um, but yeah, like Million says, that he was just a deeply, deeply, deeply uh, uh, um, unhappy man. Mm. That uh, it was, it was, you know, it was horrible being, it was horrible being him. He was just uh, tortured and uh, demon haunted. And I guess sometimes, you know, he also He's had. A, it, well, I mean, just well, fucked up. Because of my, my name. Pull the public, so they made me work five days. They... Yeah, so he worked five days on this movie. Hmm. That's but it. Huh? Left. Oh yeah. He only he only worked five days on the whole movie. Yeah. Well, you notice like his screen time is very limited. But he it's... made an impact. I mean, that looks oh like oh my god, fucking like a month worth, like four weeks at least. I mean, he pops up like a few times in the movie. The, yes. end, um, the end was fucking, I was hoping something like that would happen. I, it ended on a high note for me. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Kind but of. then it's like, it's also, it's also <laughs> sort of empty that. because it's like, it doesn't fix anything. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make anything okay. But the, the thing is, as you say, it, it ended on a high note. For that movie, like, him dying at the end would have been a high note. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I mean... Yeah. How 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 bad can you get? I mean, the fucking chick having a baby dies. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, there I is no good in this movie. Yeah. He gives a baby to a bunch of criminals. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Dude, every time I see that guy's face and hear his voice, he reminds me of Ray Stevenson, the guy that played Punisher in Warzone. Yeah. Yep. So much. Yeah. Could be his dad. Actually, Even the, the voice tone. You know the voice tone. Uh, last thing I, th I saw Fabio in, uh, he was in Torrente 4, uh, which is like a Spanish comedy about like a, uh, a, a like a, a, a cop that's like, uh, you know, from like the Franco era in Spain and kind of misses like fascism. <laughs> and so the, uh, he was, he played the villain in that. And then also he, had, he just shows up for a small part in uh, Curse of the Blind Dead. Which was like a recent uh, uh, unofficial uh, uh, blind date. Attore difficile, un attore particolare. We love to talk about him. So. No, what I remember. I still think it's weird to see actors that can only speak one language. Day, right. 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 That's weird. Yeah. right. It's but, like, to me, to me, kind of weird. It doesn't make sense. Like you want to be an actor, you want to be known around the world, type of thing, right? And you can only speak one language. It just doesn't compute. Right. Like... And the thing is about the guys like Terrence Hill, uh, Peter Ustodov was another one of those guys that was like a polyglot. He could just fucking what, like on the could go on press tours and go to all these different countries and converse yeah. in their language. And, and also make the money because you're making your voiceover money. Yep. Yeah. You're doing your own dub. 
So it's extra money. It's like you know a, pen, a pencil that can ink his own shit. You're making double the money. All right. Sure. Right. I mean, they have crash courses for some actors. For instance, Vincent Perez, when he uh, was in uh, The Crow City of Angels, didn't speak a lick of uh, of English, although he spoke, like, I think, like, three or four other languages. So they kind of, like, had to feed him his lines, which he had to, like, just kind of memorize, just phonetically. Head. I, th I thought, he, I thought he just needed to work on his pronunciation, but he knew Eng he, he spoke English, but he had a really bit thick accent. Right, but he had like two weeks to learn. <laughs> he yeah. had like two weeks to learn. <laughs> like the one of the worst one was uh, was <laughs> Jet Li. Was who? And Jet Li, like when he did the first American oh, movie, yeah, yeah, did, yeah, yeah. dude, he didn't speak shit. Like he sounded fucking great. Yeah, you know, he he sounded like fucking mm -hmm. spoke English. You know, like the whole of his life, he was really good. And that thing, if I remember, his first American movie was in Lethal Lethal Weapon Four, I think Four. it was. Was it? Or was it the one yeah. with um? Uh, fucking what was that dude's name? God damn it, I can't remember his name. I like his, remember his, his first huge role, I think, if I remember, it was the one, wasn't it? Like, yeah. I think that was American movie made, I think, I think so. which is actually like surprisingly fun because oh, there, it was, it was fucking a, good, and uh, it was Jason Statham's first American movie as well. Was it and DMX? That, yeah. He was in a movie, what, and that's when DMX. they met. And that's what, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was the Romeo, uh, because he's he spoke Romeo English, yeah, and Romeo he, he must said, die. yeah, he's a liar. That was the great, yeah. for a while. They no, Cradle to the Grave with DMX, Cradle to yeah. the Grave. Oh, yeah, that's he was, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, that was the formula. They would take a rapper and put mm -hmm. them with like a martial artist, right? As you can see, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge Jet Li fan. Oh, me too, <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, dude, dude. In, uh, seriously, and you know. The one it's when it's when Jason Statham met and became friends with Jet Li, and that's when he learned to do all those, become one of the best fucking mixed martial art motherfucker. Yes, on screen. Yes, yeah. And the thing is, is then they did a movie together called War. Yeah, I so remember good. thinking like it was it was like Lee Statham War, yeah. and you watch it and you're just like, and it was a bit of a dud. It's not a terrible movie. <laughs> But it's a just, good, but you it, wanted it, to see them beat the fucking shit out of each other. It's like get to the fucking war. But it's, right? it, that's the thing. That's what that's what they sold it upon that you thought there was gonna be a big fucking fight amongst them, and that's not what nope. it is about. Nope. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So don't oh, advertise man. your movie having the two of them fucking staring fucking yeah, daggers at each down. other and put <laughs> war <laughs> between but they them. Did, they did something too, was uh something forbidden kingdom or something kingdom. It was Jet Li and and yes. fucking Jack Jackie Chan. Chan. Yeah. And people were expecting yeah. a huge fucking yeah, amazing a fight. Too. And everybody's yeah. like, no, it wasn't. But Jackie it was, Chan always had a chip American on his movie. shoulder about um yeah, probably why. Bruce Lee. But Definitely. like I was never a big Jackie Chan fan. I just thought never thought he was a very no, good I like I like Drunken Master and Rumble in the Bronx. I, th I, th I, th I, I think I think he's great. Cinema. I, really I like the one great. he was in where it was a comedy, you know, he was in with that black dude. Yeah, that's what, that, that's what that's the thing. It's when 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 he's the clown, there's the martial art clown or something like that. He's great. When he's like, got a good support, Bronx is fucking good. Oh, yeah, Roman Bronx is dope. I, like I mean, that. look, look. Here's the thing. It's he's like a millennial friend, right? And he's just like, oh, I'm not really into Jackie Chan. What Jackie mm -hmm. Chan movies have you seen? And he starts naming them, and they're yeah. all fucking American. They're all American fucking movies. Hollywood movies. Yeah, those are not the real Jackie Chan movies. The real right. Jackie Chan movies are the are the uh, um, the ones that he did in Hong Kong. Yeah, I reserved that really for the Shaw Brothers. I'm um, sorry, like <laughs> he was the biggest movie star in the world for a while, he everywhere is? except America. But the thing is, the people went nuts, and he's the one that that uh, kind of like relaunched the do your own stunt. Yeah. From, yeah, 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 yeah. One, yeah. yeah you have to give him that. In he's the one that came back and he brought he brought that back in, and everybody went like, "He does his own stunts." I like oh, Shanghai Night. Uh, Shanghai Noon. That he took where he landed on his head for Drunken Master. And I think Bunch he did it twice. Did you see yeah. the one where he broke his fucking ankle jumping onto that boat? At that boat on Rumble and Rumble. Uh, Rumble yes, Rumble yes. And, then, yeah, they put and he still fucking kept going because he put a freaking rubber shoe around his fucking. Uh, to <laughs> yeah, keep going. painted yeah. it to look like a sneaker. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. that. They yeah, broke his foot. Hardcore man, hardcore. But you see, yeah. that was a movie that was that was set in the Bronx, mm -hmm. shot in Canada, 
uh, but uh, a totally a, a Chinese movie, totally a, a totally a Chinese movie's movie awesome. Production. Because they would never let him do shit like that. It's pretty dirty too, <clears throat> the movie. Like pretty, pretty uh, gritty. You know what I yeah. mean? Very street. That's why I liked it. And he was just he was a fucking he was an animal in that movie. Um, it's like yeah. at me, at me, I really like also the Romeo Must Die that he did. Romeo Must, yeah, that was great, dude. Yeah, yeah. that was dope. That does kind of have like a little bit of an amusing reference to the Street Fighter movies. The Shaolin movies. Phrase. You know, yeah. people are getting hit, and you're seeing like their their bones popping and shit. <laughs> the Shaolin <laughs> movies that Jet Li did was fucking amazing too, dude. That was great. Oh well, you want the like the best Jet Li movies? Uh, the Once Upon a Time in uh, China uh, trilogy is really good. Yeah, where he plays Wang Fei Hong. Me, Wang you know, Fei Hong it is like the is like the Chinese uh, equivalent of somebody like a uh, White Herb, which is to I, say he was a real person that was a martial artist and a, a doctor and uh they literally made uh i think yeah that was the chinese title for for once upon a time in china is wong fei hong 100. that means there have been a hundred like 99 wong fei hong movies before I remember, I remember discovering him in a movie called black mask Oh, oh yeah. it was oh, going. It was going around. It was the Chinese going. version. Get the Chinese yeah, version. It, it's, it, 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 longer, it's so much better. Wasn't that it's, like Kato? It, 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 it was a kind of theatrical release here. Kind, wasn't kind that, of, but it, it kind of been inspired by him, you could say, yeah. But it, wasn't, it, wasn't that like it, an expanse on Kato from the Green? No, 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 no. He's, he was no. a superhero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's yeah. like TNA has been fucked with and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a super soldier. You know, he was yeah. a super, check that uh, super shoulder, and it was pretty good. Like, and I remember that it was going around like the big uh, festivals. I think a bit before, at the same time as Spawn. Oh, the yeah. The American. Here's the thing: there's the American version. Don't watch the same thing with Iron Monkey. Don't watch the American version. Make sure you're getting the Chinese version because they're yeah, different movies, Monkey. right? They're edited <laughs> in a certain way. And with Black Mask, for instance, they got a theatrical release. Uh, uh, what's his face from uh, Miramax? You know the guy that uh, um, uh, uh, Weinstein. He yeah. um, so basically took that movie and chopped it up, ch chopped about a half an hour out of it, and then put like a hip hop soundtrack on it, right? And so you've yep. got this aerial shot in the movie it, 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 it this is hilarious i thought this made me laugh out loud anyway you've got this aerial shot of the city right in hong kong and you're hearing this hip-hop beat and you hear yeah motherfucker <laughs> right <laughs> like um, what <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah he's motherfucker. He's yeah yeah, uh, yeah, a little, a, a little awkward. Not that those uh, American versions aren't watchable; they are. But trust me, you want you want the real shit. As for Jackie Chan, everybody else was trying to imitate Bruce Lee after Bruce Lee died, and he decided he was going to be the opposite. Dude, how many so, Bruce, the, how many yeah. Bruce Lee did we get? Bruce Lee L I Bruce Lee L I Bruce Lee R H E E. Yeah. Um, the, well, the from best, well on the the genre, genre, that's a genre. He Bruce had a Lee. real he had a beef with Bruce Lee because in his in a documentary it said like he was competing with Bruce Lee on roles, but Bruce Lee beat him out every time. Oh dude, it was, so no, he was, no, 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 no. They said dude. Not, was, definitely not, because here's the thing. He was an extra, he was not in Bruce Lee's league. And he was ha like he describes an incident that happened on internet. He's a bit he's a bit of a jealous person. Well, he did, dude. I'm telling you, like in the documentary, like he he said that, like it was yeah. unless they it got lost in translation. But yeah, I mean, he's, he but said he's that. But, okay, he's right. but her. He's I'm but her. Dude, I'm not calling you a liar. I believe. Yes, I believe that you company. believe that. that. I believe that you believe that about about. Uh, but but this is the thing. He said that he kind of got grazed, and he played it up to be like worse than it was because he wanted as much of an interaction with Bruce Lee as possible. And Bruce Lee was like, oh, oh, dude, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you okay? Right? And then the next yeah. day, he was like, Jackie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, how's, how's your... How's your keep in mind, Jackie like, Chang oh, was... that's a little sore. And he said it like he was fine, but he was like playing it up. Just so he Jackie, could... Uh, keep in mind, Jackie Chang was technically a nobody until, we did, until he got discovered in the U.S. and everywhere. Yeah, he was. He had a whole bunch of movies over there, but it was very, very like... Rumble it was the B-rated movies. 
He also yep. had a problem with the Japanese mafia in Japan. Yep. Like they were hitting up all the actors. And now, now he's now he supports the CCP. And well, yeah. <laughs> he well, supports the Chinese movies are yeah. basically run by this. By the... you know what's interesting? American movies are becoming a lot like the Chinese movies. And I don't mean the Chinese movies from like the eighties, are 70s, becoming seventies, eighties, and nineties, <laughs> right? Because yep. Hong Kong cinema from the nineties slapped. It was fucking amazing. They had so yeah. many fucking great movies, man. So many great movies. Yep. And in the eighties too, man, with all the fucking Shaw Brothers shit. Awesome, 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 awesome. And then around, you know, there was the handover in 1997. And a lot of people were thinking, well, you know, how is this going to affect Hong Kong? And everything continued pretty much the same until around 2005, they just started putting in the propaganda hard. And I watch American movies now and I'm like, oh, there's the woke part that they have to put in. Right? And you can tell the director's heart really isn't in it. But they just have to put that in there. And some of the Chinese uh, uh, directors, they have to have like a pro-Chinese, anti-Western uh, mm. uh, 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 Sounds like Marvel Comics. You remember the, the uh, discussion uh, we had about the writers what, over at Marvel? Yeah. yeah, but what they'll do is, and I find this really interesting, they'll put that like at the end of the movie. Yep. And you're kind of like, oh, I get it. Because they, they don't like doing that or, shit. These are real or filmmakers, just, right? Or it's just one line in the middle of a bigger conversation where they're going to say something about the capitalism or something right. that relates. Like, so just slide it in a little bit. But they did that. Like, you would watch it like a Godzilla movie and you would see it pop, it pop in once in a while. You're like, what the fuck? A Godzilla <laughs> movie? Those are Japanese, not Chinese. No, no, but I, I'm using it as an example. Okay. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, are you talking about like the American? Godzilla movies or the mm -hmm. or the Japanese Godzilla movies? No, I, like translations in, in general. Like I just used like Godzilla because the first name that came to my mind. But you would watch a and they like a Chinese movie or Asian, even sometimes Japanese translated. Yeah, and they would have a type of little message forced into it out of nowhere. My sensei, right, right. When he, and he you, said you that, get the sense that the directors are doing this so they can just one day do the director's cut and just go. Bye -bye. <laughs> that. I say he said, like he studied overseas, and he said yeah. they have never gotten over Hiroshima. Like, well, so they include you, that in know, every one of the movies and everything. Like, he was, there's like, there's always going to be that stigma. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, well, not in the period pieces, not like the, uh, you know, the uh, the samurai films. And, uh, no, and, not and those. Of course not. Uh, there was no uh, nuclear bombs and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Akira right. is a masterpiece. A and movie. We got to make a reference to Hiroshima. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> right. we'll go back and uh, put that marketing in there. Put a mushroom cloud in the background. <laughs> uh, you know, a, lot of those, a lot of the animes and all those movies would start with the Hiroshima explosion. Yep. Absolutely. Of course. That's like, like Akira. Akira that's, why, that's what it is when you see it when it starts. You hear it, you see the big. Yep. And uh, you look, and the, the, that that's impossible for it to be lost on you, right? It's not ex it's not exactly uh, subtle. Uh, Godzilla minus one, for instance. Uh, oh, dude, that movie is so Godzilla insane. was came about because of the Hiroshima, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. exactly. And it's inspired from the monster from a thousand. Uh, thousand from a thousand leagues. Yeah, that's it. I, I keep mixing up with another movie, but yeah. And that movie, dude. That's what. That's the fun part. Is see the American version of fucking uh, Godzilla. It's not Godzilla. It's the monster from a thousand leap. Yes. It's yes. a remake of that fucking movie, scene by scene, almost. Yes. Yes. It's not oh. Godzilla, but they called it Godzilla. Going, we're gonna do that movie that inspired Godzilla and call oh, it Godzilla. How fucking dare you? <laughs> oh shit! Oh, okay. But that's the, but, that scene it of is. the boat. That scene of the the fucking old man. The helicopter scene, like everything's from that movie. Yes. Well, you yeah, know right. that that original movie that it's the actually the the, the beast from Ten Thousand Leagues. There you go. The beast from Ten Thousand Leagues. That's yeah. it, right? Because I sometimes get my Harryhausen movies mixed up, mixed up. Yeah. The me octopus, too. and there's the one with the giant lizard. Hold on. Let me let me just do it. Uh, right. Just... And the and the one with the giant lizard is actually based on a Ray Bradbury story called The Lighthouse. Which is mm. about a lighthouse, you know, that lets out this balance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a dinosaur shows up because it thinks it's another dinosaur. 
Well, that was like a stop motion, like was it? Where yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. Saw yeah, I remember that. That was crazy. And then it gets pissed off because it's the not beast swam twenty thousand fathoms. I love those movies, dude. Those movies are awesome. awesome. I think it was the beast from twenty thousand fathom. That's, That's the name. Yeah. I think is that the one with the octopus, or is that the one with the uh, the giant uh, the giant the, lizard? It's the giant lizard in black and white. That's it. Co- yeah, that's it. The beast from twenty thousand fathoms in 1953. Yep. So if you if you just go watch it, like you could find it on YouTube, and you'll see, dude, it's an exact remake of the it's the the the, the Godzilla 1998. It's an exact remake. Like even that joke of the cameraman going, it's uh-huh. it's a part of the police officer scene. Yes. Yes, the cop just going just, just fucking using no! fucking thing. Yeah, no, that's that's an awesome movie. But yep. Godzilla has a totally different tone to it. Godzilla is a brooding movie. That's just like heavy, heavy, and, heavy. And he was heavy created atmosphere. by the nuclear bomb, while the other one is a monster that got some that got him frozen. Right. Ex- ex- exactly. It's like not the last um, dinosaur it's symbolic of like a national trauma. And the no, and, last dinosaur was a great movie. And, and, and Hiroshima <laughs> was a fucking disgusting. Um, it was a tragedy. Horrible, it should horrible. never have fucking album happen. It's horrible. Horrible. But thank you for all the fucking anime we ever fucking had from it. And Godzilla, dude. The oh, movie about dude, Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh. fuck. Well, that's the thing. That's what art is for, right? It, it, nope. it, it's, for, it's, it's, it's for healing, in many yep. respects, and so. You know, it gave them a chance to work shit out. Like, for instance, you look at, like, I always wondered about, like, the Italian movies and all the fucking horrific sadism that's in them. Like, this one, right? Mm -hmm. And I was always like, where the, like, what is up with that? And it turns out that it was the Italians' way of dealing with uh, fascism, right? And World War II. Nazis. They had their own shit to work out. Yeah. Uh, because of course there have been such uh, 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 savage savagery, especially amongst the uh, aristocracy. Like they were literally just grabbing dudes and stripping them naked and hunting them. Yep. Damn. Like bad, bad, bad shit. Really. Yeah, yeah like that, uh, that hard target shit. thing. Like uh, the can- the cannibal dinner or something. Like there was another one. Uh, dude, that was an actual thing. It's fucking insane. Yes. Yes. Completely. Yeah. As and so it, yeah. Because I remember there was there was a. Uh, a little uh, sub chapter in one of my Bibles, which is Fantastic Films, an illustrated survey by uh, the British critic uh, Peter Nichols. And he goes into like Fulci's movies and, and Argento's and he asks a question. And the, the, you know, the sub, you know, the uh, title of the sub chapter is Are the Italian Sadists? Mm. Right. And I was just like, yeah, no, I was like, 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 right. What is up with that? And yeah, it turns out it was their way of dealing with their history of, uh, of fascism. As for the cannibal movies, I was like, especially like, what the fuck is wrong with the Italians? And it turns out they weren't making them for the Italians. They were making them for the Japanese. So it's like, what's up with the Japanese? The Japanese are fucked up in some of the shit they like. Like, yeah. Well, everybody's mm. fucked up and so. No, oh, not like the Japanese. <laughs> Japanese oh, no, like some weird shit. Yeah, they yeah, just say every, every everyone did some fra- fuck up, fucked up, crazy shit in their fucking past. Every nation, no. everywhere, they all did some fucking fucked up thing. If you yeah. think that your race or whatever your nationality, your people never did horrible and horrible thing to their own and to others, you're fucking stupid. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about their taste and entertainment. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, but that has to do with it. Yeah, it has to do with it, dude. Yeah, it does. Like, like in Europe, it was an actual thing to cannibal dinner, the hunting of people. Like, dude, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. insane. Yeah, I mean, like, like, hard target. Remember the, the the Louisiana with the fucking uh, John Woo, John, John Woo with Jack Lo- Jack Lo- Van Damme. That was a fucking thing that was fucking in Europe. They were Canada, sending the too. fucking hounds of after them, hunting yes. them. They were they preferred hunting people than hunting yeah. fucking Spanish Civil War. animal. That That's what they used to do with slaves. Yeah, like they used to hunt them. Yeah. That's the uh, the the ninth. Well, that you, you probably heard about that. It was a big thing in Time Magazine. They did about that. It was hunting parties in uh, in Canada. The British family would come over. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of kids there. there I don't think that it's disappear. not still going on, by the way. Yeah, I don't think it's not still going on. I mean, you look at certain. I just want to say, speaking of uh, human beings, 
Speaking of cannibalism, that was clam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get snacked on. You get snacked on. Or, uh, or Fallout. You guys watch Fallout lately? Dude, yeah. Fallout is the shit. I've, I've only There's seen so the first episode. Episode. No movie spoilers. It's brilliant. It's really, really, really good. It's such a pleasant surprise. Let's hope that they don't ruin it with season two the way that they did with Westworld. Well, I don't season know. two is where they fucked up. I Everything. have a feeling that yeah. they're not going to fuck it up because they got screwed. Well, Jonathan Nolan's like his his yeah. other show he did, uh, Christine's uh, brother, the person I'm of interest. That show was pretty solid. It, I'm probably um, gonna check it out. Was on there too, and he got his head cut off. And, and, I'm I'm probably gonna check it out, but according to what I'm seeing, it's the people that weren't fans of fucking Fallout, like the fake fans, like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Hardcore fans didn't like it because they changed a whole bunch of shit. Like the I never played name, Fallout. I have no the company name or stuff like that. They changed a whole bunch of stuff. One. Yeah, yeah. I name. never. I don't know anything about Fallout, the video it's a game. It's video game. Yeah, it's not Moby Dick. It's not Moby Dick. It's not Shakespeare. It's a fucking video game. Right? And, and video really video cool. games aren't oh. art. Look, but guys. really, you're looking for, like, people are looking for, like, a literal adaptation of the video game and play the fucking video game. I play right? the video I like game. The way they, I love the way that they recreated that world they did it from perfect. the video game. The visuals are perfect. They did it. They yes. made it. The vaults look like the vaults yes. in the game. Everything, yes. is, and they can totally do a Bioshock movie. If yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. So they're doing. They're doing a fucking Bioshock series. That's oh, cool. Really? Dude, that'd be fucking sweet. Son. The I, I say that. on Fallout are solid. I, that's yeah. it. They're I solid. Only two episodes, man. And seeing Michael Rappaport getting ripped apart by a mutant look, bear. Yeah, that was I'm awesome. a big. I'm a big Borderland fucking fan. I saw the trailer of the movie. Everything looks on point, like decor, like decor, yeah, everything. The movie looks like shit. Yeah. The right. characters, the main characters are not there. It's a fucking like girl, girl yeah. team. Like, oh, I don't girl think I team. Seen it's Borderlands? Like, yeah. I don't know if I've seen it. Right it's not out yet. Dude, it's the golden, it's the golden, the golden, golden age girls. fucking woman in lead of the fucking thing with the, yeah. like, you don't have Brick. You don't even have Mordecai. You don't have the fucking main character. Like, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's, I will say I Fallout did a pretty good job, though, man, of showing the apocalypse, like the whole wasteland. Like, the visuals in the show look pretty cool, man. Uh, you know I don't know nothing saying? about the you game. I've never played them. But yeah. so I, I, I've only seen two episodes, and I like it. I love the ghoul. It's very it. diesel punk. You know what I'm saying? I'm probably going to wait a little I'm gonna you know? wait a little bit so I can go with a fresh mind and not a, no expectation. And I think, like, you finally got his role, you know, Walt Giggins or Goggins or whatever. You finally got his lead. You know what I mean? I was like, cool. That's the cowboy. Yeah, they, they the, the cool. did, you, did you ever see the series he was in before that called well way before like way Justified? back called, no was it heat or was it the the shield, the shield? that's what it was I, I the never shield. saw him in the shield i've seen him in some oh, movie where he played a the shield he was talking about the guy with no nose and fall out he was a piece of shit cop in the shield Is they were the all pieces of shit cops and he was in house of thousand corpses that was the first thing i think it was the shield also yeah, but that's yeah. the guy you're talking about—the guy that has no nose. Yeah, yeah. the cowboy. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude, yeah. man, he was fucking great in Fat Man. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's a great actor. Yeah, fantastic. Really. And the guy guys. from the guy from the uh, not guy from the insurance commercials, Mayhem. Like they were both in in the Shield. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There was a scene where he just like just dumping on these fools in the town. I love the set design. And my lady, she's like, oh, that little Butch Lever right there. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're talking like, about, oh, I'm like, well, you ain't well, got no talking about the shield. You're talking about the old series was the guy that played the thing, right? Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, yeah, yeah he yeah. was in the shield too. That he was, was um supporting Michael characters, Chiklis. right? Yeah, Michael Chiklis, Walton yeah. Giggins, or Goggins. Well, one a few one things I liked characters. about the Fantastic Four movies. Mm. He oh, actually yeah. he put his heart into that. He was he was fucking insane. Like seriously, that thing. Yeah. He was great. He went ahead and he fucking worked out. He wanted to look like the thing and shit like that. Like, he was, he he was the main draw for me. Like I enjoyed those movies from the time that they were. No, I mean, watched them not not too long. Summer Surfer was pretty, pretty cool. Dope. Galactus. The only was, one. The only one I, I, I don't they like. They did a good job on the Surfer, but they took him out immediately. Yeah. The only one I don't. The only one I don't they like can never is get the, Doctor Doom right for fuck's yeah. sake. That's my it's point. It's like they're afraid to do a proper yeah. Doctor Doom because they're like, oh, people are gonna be like, oh, well, he's a Darth Vader ripoff. Yeah. I don't even think it's that. I think these directors just, they're like, oh, this is a complete, like, well rounded series. Let me put my mark on it. So, what are you trying to do, Pops? <laughs> no, I, I absolutely my believe scene that it's in Steve. this whole movie right there. This is my favorite scene in the whole movie. <laughs> well, it's gonna, the Bukaki one? 
the well, shape Kenny, you see. What happened was the guy came back from the grave and he did something in his face. Everywhere, everywhere, and in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, let's uh, take another look at the trailer. Yeah, trailer. Oh, your mind. Oh, lighters. Your lighters out. Wouldn't you love to trick like I some SJWs or just some real pussies in, in, into watching this movie, convince them that it's like a nice family film? <laughs> no, they probably like it, dude. It's nice. It's pure. It's wholesome. What did you buy the Beatles? They were born. Little baby will be born. <laughs> right? Like, you know. Give it to a bunch with of a single criminals. purpose. <laughs> Survival. Stubby Preston. Survival. Professional card sharp. Clem. The Clem. drunk. Completely Money. A cheap prostitute. <laughs> That's fucked up. Not just a prostitute, the cheap. Pro- really, dude? You had to prostitute. fucking add insult to injury. <laughs> By the way, one of the things about the Old West that people don't understand, there was no chicks. Very, very few. And your sex life, it was either with prostitutes or with your hand. Or, with or, or Brokeback Mountain was a real yeah. thing. Yeah, well, cowboys. It was. It was. I'm sorry, there's, the Minotaurs, they came from somewhere. That's actually true, yeah, right? right? It's that really absolutely happened. true. It's yeah, so true. That, that's why when the Brokeback Mountain thing, when, like when the that controversy, <laughs> when that the broke out, and I laughed. It was came just from like, somewhere. cowboys are that's... totally gay. <laughs> Is, are you going to have any, like, and what? mountain stuff that's happen great. in Butch Cleaver? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there were very, very few. Uh, like the number of uh, of honest, quote unquote, women to women of ill repute was like ten to one. Yeah, there are those hoods. The bunnies convinced they're coming. They're coming. They're coming for that. The straight up fucking Jack and Lynch and motherfuckers. Bounce too. <laughs> Flying through the air, John Wu style. It right. Didn't work out. It didn't work out though. He was no channel yeah, flag. It's okay with me. I don't even remember my own name. <laughs> Murder, rape, robbery, or all three of them. I'm a friend of all the dead people. I see them all the time. Some mad ass. I was trying. I was trying to hit, hit the pause button. Man, ass. And sometimes in the daytime. As they headed toward the west, spurred on by the promise of freedom, their trail crosses with that of another outcast, Chaco, the professional killer. You see? It's just like another outcast. No, a fucking serial killer. Yeah, that, that, that fucking dude is a seriously badass character. Awesome. And once again, that's due to million. There's a reason why he put asses in seats. Oh. Well, that's an outlaw, right? Oh. So that is- that, that <laughs> sheriff, by the way, the guy that he uh, that, that, that he's uh, skinning and fucking torturing, he was in a ton of spaghettis. And in fact, you guys remember that scene in Fistful of Dollars, the first guys that he guns down when he gets to town, where he's just like, you know, so like he asks them to apologize. To his to his horse, yeah, <laughs> right. He's one of those. He's he was one of those guys. One of the first guys to get blasted. So let us pray together now. Worst music for a western. A fancy dresser. That's what I'm saying. Look, 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 it's it's like the K. Here's a funny thing that happened on Cinema Again, right? First of all, internet is the coolest thing that ever. And the coolest thing ever on the internet was Cinemageddon, because that's where you would find these movies when they were extremely hard to find. And somebody took Kaoma, which was like a year. Uh, like Coyote year. And it has a similar soundtrack. And somebody was like, yeah, I got rid of all the goofy music. And people went ballistic. They were like, you fucked hard. What the fuck were you thinking? That's one of the things we love about that fucking movie. And it's, it's, so it becomes. It I'd becomes, be cool if they took out the, the music. I think. Oh, yeah. come on, man. Yeah. Got, it's part of the charm. It's 
part of the charm. Some hip hop, you know, or like something like that. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, motherfucker. The Matt's survive. music in there. Oh, oh, man. Man. <laughs> Matt can shred, man. Matt can shred. Can That's a really good sound. Someday I'm gonna kill you! Clem, his fool's paradise became a hell. Ooh. Bunny, she discovered love for the first time, but fate was to cheat her of her happiness. Oh, didn't mean to show that. Look over there! Yeah, look at David, you chipped on it. Lived in a world of dreams. I think that's your trailer, man. I think it's oh, so PG-13. Oh, so PG-13. Oh, shit. Nine by a cliff. What the fuck was going to do? You pause, you show up the guy's ass, and you skip the Of course I got this off of YouTube. I could kill you right now. I could kill you right now. I want you to die. Ringo. Well, Chaco, of course. Total fucking, total fucking leering fucking sadist. Absolute piece of shit. Go fuck up the music. So let us pray. See, that, that's the thing. I think the music makes this movie more fucked up. Yeah, it does. Very melancholy. Yeah, like that stuck in the middle with you. Remember the Reservoir Dogs? What was that? Reservoir dogs when he's torturing the fucking cop and then it's listening to the fucking stuck in the middle with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like a, it, it does that freaking moment. That's what the music does. Yeah. It feels happy, it. happy. See, that's Boy. taken from Django. Yep. Stuck in the yeah. Middle. The ear, the ear scene. Although in Django it's more brutal because then they fucking <laughs> stuff dun, dun, it in his dun, mouth. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, he's dancing. Mm -hmm. oh, I do. I love that scene. Mister? Mr. Blonde was the shit. Oh. <laughs> we don't talk about like, bitch. no yeah no, I'm just, I'm just, look, like i said tarantino my friend Prascal will say otherwise <laughs> no, I, 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 you like no tarantino I around I these parts you know speaking no tarantino around here Fuck, that means fighting words no no i mean look, <laughs> uh, i saw an interview with alex garland wait he made great movies you know I did. not all of them Ooh. Sim's gonna be a I an interview with Alex Garland, right? And, and you know, we have civil war out right now. And he, he was asked about like what's the status of 28 years later, right? Which is gonna be the movie. third movie oh, in no. uh, yeah, the yeah. 28 days yeah. later uh, series, right? Is that, is that for real? Like that's actually yes. something. Yes, oh, Alex Garland has written it. He's written the screenplay, and it looks like uh Danny Boyle is gonna come back to, to uh direct. Hell yeah. And he and and it was this was just a great interview because he was just like, yeah, like remember like the first twenty eight days later, yeah, I absolutely ripped off uh, um, a bunch of stuff. Like I ripped off uh, uh, Day of the Triffids, right? Especially yeah. the beginning is a total rip off yeah, from David. Like and he was referring to he was always referring to the movies that he borrowed from, yeah, and <laughs> admitting it and calling and saying, yeah, I stole that, I ripped Lost. that off. You will never hear Tarantino say that. Uh, that same thing with Rob Zombie. Did. Give your propers. Give your propers. Steal all you like, but then admit it. Well, you know, I love this, Brian. You like, know, um, no. Rob Zombie's working on a new uh, series called Fred. Is that real or is that fake? I thought that I was a fake. I think it's real. I think it was real. Fred Krueger, After right? the monsters, yeah. he should right. never be allowed near a fucking... I don't think it's I real. I agree with that. <laughs> I don't think it's real though, because I, uh, I think this it's like is, AI. I could have swore it was real. It looks pretty legit bit, now, like the one I saw man. today. But uh, she's nice the out. worst actress, man. Because he already, he already fucked. She's he already terrible, fucked, dude. She's he a, already fucked over at Halloween, and I don't want him to touch anything else. Yeah, I well, yeah. Two I mean, new Halloween movies. <laughs> and he just keeps remaking fucking Texas Chainsaw. I heard he was going to be remaking the. Christine I heard he was going to do Halloween, except with uh, Leatherface is going to be uh, with Christine. Uh, <laughs> it's a crossover. Well, I heard he was going to do a new Christine too, but Leatherface was going to be driving it. it was with the chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time. Same thing with Hellraiser, except. Leatherface yeah, is going to be a, a cinnabite. He has, a, he has, a, he has a a a an extendable and retractable chainsaw that comes out of the front of the car. <laughs> 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 that would be pretty dope. <laughs> that would be pretty dope. I look, I totally look, I look, totally I look, not ripped I off of Chainsaw Man. You know, chainsaw we just ripped car. you off, everybody. 
Yeah, this is my completely original idea, and I got a cool <laughs> song to go with it. Okay. <laughs> go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Go with it. For sure. But yeah, man, people really responded to that uh, that Hell Knight uh, a post. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. did they? Like, I fucking, I actually got somebody who asked me if I, they could write it, and I was like, that's, ah, that's too late, dude. <laughs> <laughs> beat you. Beat you. Beat you to the punch. But it was, uh, yeah, dude. And then, uh, I got your boy saying that there's not going to be any money left for anybody else once it launches. I'm like, oh, really? I'm cool with that. You like, know? what? Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't well, know. look, I mean, yeah. they, I'm know, not the that op- optimistic. Scene are you know changing, what I'm saying? And we need to evolve and we need to. Uh, I mean, we always knew that, it, that, that, the, that the crowdfunding bubble would burst, that, um, you know, whether this is a downturn or whether it's like the end. We don't know yet. Yeah, but you, I'll know. keep saying that, but that's not it's true. Right. I mean, it's not, you know. it's not true, dude. It's a problem that no, nobody, nobody right now, people don't have as money, free yes. money to just pen out of nowhere. So it, obviously, sales are going to drop a little bit. Like, well, instead of throwing two hundred dollars to you, they're going to be throwing twenty. Have you have like, you checked out Kickstarter? Like thousand campaign. Because Kickstarter campaigns are doing like fucking amazing right now, dude. I mean, really? You're looking like hundred thousand yeah. dollar campaigns. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, shit. Dude, look at and that guy. Put- Sen- that a writer called Sanderson, I think his name is. Like he oh, just yeah. broke the fucking record again. Yeah. Yeah, but oh, I'm God. talking about books that I've like, never heard look, about. Twenty-two like, million dollars. In, yeah. in, dude, these in are the creators. Days. These are creators I've never heard of before. And they, they're like doing like incredible numbers, but the books look amazing, dude. Like incredible. Yeah, great. I'm the, 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 you know, uh, I'm definitely the money's there. To, if I, you I've give them Kickstarter before, but I've never, here's the thing. I've done Kickstarter before for like second chances, but I've never worked on it. That is to mm-hmm. say a Kickstarter page is very different from an Indiegogo page. Mm-hmm. You have well, to here's have the a deal. video. You have to have a video that features yourself. You well, have that's- to. Talk it's actually them. not a problem, but yeah. I'm telling you, dude, if you give somebody something worth buying, they're going to buy it. Yes. <laughs> I'm saying, no, I mean, for that's... sure. For sure. That's why ultimately the most important thing is make sure you have a good product. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, as far as like money not being there, yeah, if you're doing a shitty product, yeah, money's not going to be there. Sorry. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, visibility, uh... visibility is key for every fucking thing, but dude, one, people don't, there's, there's so many campaigns now that it's not funny so instead of giving like 100 or 200 on one you're going to split it up in multiple to back multiple people i, well, I know that's what has been happening with me so i was going like oh i'm gonna buy like this that or i'm chipping in with fucking uh, coleman sometimes like he's in my area so we i will say this and we split like one of the things all those kickstarter projects have in common is that they did a major like push on facebook and instagram yeah they have like, paid promo promotion. Yeah. I'm talking to you guys about this. Yeah, you know, I've so, been wanting to like with the. If we could all, we could all put, we could all chip in and make sure to promote every fucking campaign that we have. Word up, word up. I, I'm down with that freaking program. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's 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 it's, and you know, like I yeah, said, yeah, I already like, do that. Uh, uh, Preston, Preston, did you draw that facial hair in yet? Yeah, so I told you it was uploaded. Uploaded the pages it? like two days ago. Okay, let me see. Let me see, because I've because I've been on other people's streams like bitching at you about it. Uh, you know, just don't check your messages. That's <laughs> that might that might have something to do with things. Let's see. Yeah, that shit happens. It's weird. <laughs> I know I'm terrible that. Way. <laughs> but hey, but you know, any excuse to like you know throw some shade your way and like oh, I don't give guys. You know, oh, by the way, you're 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 you're, 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 you're of that shit. Your figurines are gonna be on your way soon. I'm just. I oh. have to fucking deal with the fucking post office, uh, my business account, and I, I ordered a new scale because, you know, to try and get a discount, I need to be able to know exactly the weight and everything and do it on the web. Uh, you got too much weed, like, bunched up in the old scale? Or... Hmm? <laughs> oh, dude, you did you, uh, did you see that? I, 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 buy, I, buy a tw- that new art? The, well, the, this is the new art. I'm talking about, like, the uh, the pages that are that are already colored. The ones that I want to send to uh, to, to uh, Ollie's to uh, to letter. I don't know. Who, oh, we could always do that later, right? Like he could letter that shit, and then you could go in and. Uh, um, Dep- like, depending if there's supposedly color lettering that you want in there that fits the thing, but yeah, you can pretty much have the base done in okay. black and white. Yeah. 
right. you just switch the if he sends you the PDF, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not the PDF, I mean like the uh, BSD or whatever you fucking use. The TIFF or whatever. whatever yeah, yeah, but our layer TIFF. Because if he has a TIFF and the, the, the lettering is already merged in it, you can't just switch it. Yeah, it's got to be layered, but TIFFs are yeah. way better than uh, JPEGs or yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. TIFF, you can say like for PS, especially for Photoshop, you can save them with layers in it. So let's say you have like you leaves like just the layer the lettering with a transparency, yeah. and then you have, you have the DR, and you yeah. save it as a TIFF with layers. You reopen yeah. it in Photoshop, and you can just replace the image. Okay, awesome. All right, I'm gonna do that. Uh, because, you know, one of the reasons that the previous campaign, I think, only made about like nine grand was there was no new art on there. And this time I'm going to be able to launch with a fuck ton of new art. <laughs> yeah, you kind of need new art. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm surprised I even made uh, 9K uh, with no new art. So That's pretty good, dude. That's, yeah, that no, says it's a lot it's, about it's, the product. It's very, it's very good. Well, you know, I'm a year and a half late, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, uh, dude, yeah. You know, but uh, but tell you uh, me, I'm fucking stoked that the book's going to print by the end of the month, dude. Oh, dude. Like, dude, dude, I, 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 I was going through the lettering, like <laughs> Dave goes over the special effects of Murder Doll, right? Yeah, remember Murder Doll? And of there's course. a mistake, there's a mistake in there that me, you, or nobody else ever fucking picked on, right? And mm -hmm. there's a remember, uh, I'm gonna try not to do any spoiler, but so just so you click, remember when she wakes up. Yes. And somebody goes, she's like a fucking blender or something. Remember? There's a scene there where she had the pigtails. All along, she has her fucking loose hair with the fucking tendrils waving. But one panel, she had the fucking pigtails. I'm like, oh, continuity. I've done that before. I went, oh, you, fuck. You so I, so I, went quick, in, I went in, fixed it, sent yeah. it to fucking be again. I go, time. dude, everything's yeah. fixed. All you have to do right. is do the, the rendering on the hair. It's the, I forget to draw okay. horns on my character's back all the time. Yeah, yeah, but, it's, it's, it's yeah but something like that, you know, like forgetting a patch or something, like it's not the end of the world. I could have maybe go like, right. Ah. The dude, right. she goes from like, for one panel, she has her pigtails and then none. You're like. <laughs> the thing, the, the one thing that people have noticed, the only, and it's the only thing that people have uh, pointed out that's like fucked up in Six Gun Gorillas. In the first issue, uh, the cards aren't right. Because mm. I had what happened was I told like he uh, uh, I told Adrian the artist I told him like no like those are the wrong cards, but I was just like you know what I'll just change the dialogue. <laughs> so right and then what did he do? He went then and fixed the cards. <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> but there's certain things where I'm just like at a certain point you're like I it just needs to get out. But the, yep. the, the, there's also the fact that we're, we're managing everything ourselves, right? And like, yeah. like we've discussed, dude, there's stuff that I've noticed, you noticed. Dude, we've been over everything in the book, the dialogues, at least four times each story. Hmm. Right. Why? Because yeah. we go over it. Oh, I'm just going to go. Again. Oh, I found this. Oh, I found this. Because you get so bla blasé. Like yeah. you, you get, you kind of get turned off to... by the thing. Like it's like well, you go into speed reading mode, right? So right, right. Like, oh, I gotta no, read well, that's why you need an editor. You need somebody with fresh eyes to go over. Exactly. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah but that's exactly. the thing. I had Steve. I have Brian, and we still miss some shit. Well, right. that's going to happen. I mean, yeah. it's you know, yeah. hell, it happened with Marvel and DC, and they had a whole staff looking. But that's at the shit, point. So. That's no, the point I'm make. That's the point I'm trying to make. Is because right now you yeah. also have people go look, look. You forgot this there. <laughs> You're like. Yeah. Seriously, guy. <laughs> this yeah, is no, how you handle you know, that. You, you're like, right, I'll fix yeah, it in I mean, the next one. So that's a collector's decision. item. Yeah, I do do <laughs> Exactly. I exactly. Weapons. Right. It's like the, the the Revenge of the Jedi uh, merchandise. Like patches <laughs> and posters and shit. You guys mm -hmm. can remember that thing. And then it was just like, no, they're turning it into changing the title because revenge is not the way of the Jedi. But it was, yeah, or, Revenge of the Jedi, and anything with that on it is, I'm, um, I'm sure, worth like a fucking mountain of fucking gold oh, on yeah. it now. Jesus, man. So, final thoughts on Four of the Apocalypse, gentlemen. Worst fucking movie ever. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like the ending, but I thought the movie could have, uh, uh, you know, benefited for some from some editing. I thought it was kind of long in a lot of spots. I agree. Um, yeah, I would say nice the cover. The best. Yeah, the cover's awesome. Whoever did that cover is a fucking beast. I got a whole folder full of uh, spaghetti western poster art. <laughs> I wonder if it was a comic artist that did that. Like, 
Mm. I thought the Maybe. movie was hilarious. Everybody <laughs> should watch it. <laughs> it's great for the whole family. <laughs> it's it's a rough. Here's the thing. It's a rough watch. Which yeah, Disney is a shame. Yeah, it's, it's supposed like, to be. You know, it's supposed to take you to like um, yeah a, a certain part of hell, you know. Um, but I you mean, gotta be in the right mood. West. Yeah, you gotta be in the right mood. I yeah. it took me a few days to watch it. <clears throat> I had to keep going back. But um, yeah, <laughs> um, I, I did like the ending, and um, it, it it was uh it was definitely worth the watch. I will say this: like, if you're on antidepressants, probably not the best movie for you. Yeah. <laughs> I had a you know because I always try to like you know, even when I know a movie pretty well. Uh, for these streams, I always try to like watch the movie like the night before. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Refresher. And, yeah, and I had to split this up. Now, if you are on antidepressants and you watch the movie and something does happen, blame Brian. Yes. <laughs> it's all, it's <laughs> the only with the seriously dark sense of humor yeah, here, or what? <laughs> hey, look, I watched it in one sitting, giggling my ass off. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you're a sick bastard like Pops, you might just tune into this and like watch it as a comedy. It's, it's like very, very, black really weird. very black comedy. These movies it's, are gonna kind of like like you're gonna tip into some territories like this when you're going into like you know the way the the, the country was formed. You know, in this case, it's already the fantastical, hellacious um, spaghetti West spin on the formation of America. You know. Um, you know, you're gonna right, so you're, you're going already to like in, the, fucking, in, a, in a bad place. Yeah, whether it's like you know the French Indian War, the you know Civil War, you know the, the the Wild West, you know it was all just a brutal time. And you're gonna have these fucking stories that are that are gonna take you there sometimes, you know. And I stand by my statement: there was nobody in the old West with ten fingers named Stubby. Absolutely. Stubby. Uh, what about what thing, about what about nine toes West. though? This is not the old west. This is the spaghetti west. The spaghetti, the spaghetti west. west is like Why don't you call you stubby? I had my penis shot off. <laughs> <laughs> Buster Stubbs. Bust it off. <laughs> From shot Buster's that little nuts. <laughs> shot that little thingy right off on off, on off of there. It's oh. like that was the that was the thing that made Yeah, we saw we saw the bukkake scene. scene. There's was the gonna be a lot of lonely chickens. chickens. And it was a, it was a comedy <laughs> after that. Like, Did you get to the chicken fucker in Fallout yet? No. <laughs> Which episode is that? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Yes. I th yes. Yes. Do you guys ever talk to the characters in the movie? Oh, for sure. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It's like only oh, the I'm Omen. Like, when I watch the I'm Omen, I'm the dude. I'm like, come on, don't uh, don't, don't, don't go behind. Don't go in that door. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck are you It'll going upstairs? Like You're running away. You're going to the third floor. You can't. I know. You can't. I know. I like well, it when it's in the movie theater, you know, like, oh, hell no. You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> I, right. I got in trouble. I got in trouble on, like, alt.horror, you know, mm -hmm. back in the Usenet days. You got feel, I don't know if anybody here is old enough to remember what the fuck Usenet was, mm -hmm. but you had Usenet groups back in the day, which was, like, the early version of, like, web boards, like Reddit and that sort of mm -hmm. a thing. And I got – people got mad at me because I suggested, like, every horror movie DVD – should have an uh, alternate a, uh, an audio track that's like the black audience, right? Like you're like a hundred in a cinema, like in a hundred uh, across a hundred uh, uh, twenty eighth Street in Harlem, right? And just like bitch, don't open that door <laughs> and all that stuff, right? And they were like that racist, and I was like, I've heard at least five black comedians do bits on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you talking about? That bitch gonna die. Don't go up there. Gonna die. Yep. yep. Uh -huh. look, uh -huh. for me, See you did. I'm not. I'm not black, and I and I did that. You know. I'm just yeah. Yes. Me. Yes. But but that that would be the fact that that was at one time a black thing is just a fucking fact. <laughs> the the <laughs> thing that killed me point that out. is right from the beginning. The dude's name had me laughing. So then it was like. It was a comedy after. You know, right from the beginning, you're right. Like, I was like, is he missing fingers? <laughs> was, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, why? Stubby? I was like, really? On a gambler? You know? I was like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. And the white well, like body said, 
it may it may be like you know how they call uh, a short guy stretch, or they might call like a. Are you a saying his fingers are too long? Shorty. Is that why they call him? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense either. Uh, <laughs> it's it's what they call somebody that plays, that plays guitar with short fingers. Remember, right. Right, like Slim Pickens, who was like fucking or a, pia or a, pia or a pianist that has short fingers. They call them stumpies. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. It was just stumpy. funny. It just, stumpy fingers. It just yeah. the tone for the beauty. When you're saying stumpy fingers, it means that they're they're short or they're thick oh. and short. Right, right, right. Because that's so what you know, it would it, it would be an it would be an impediment for a gunsman, a gunslinger, unless you got. Yeah, but he's not a gunslinger. That's the whole thing. He's a gambler. Hard player. Right. Long, long, nimble fingers are necessary for fucking. Yeah. We're not talking about Doc Holiday. He doesn't touch a gun, you know. Like, right, right. Towards exactly. the end. He's just, he's just basically like, you know, dressed like a dandy, and he does you know, he with, does the, with, with the lace hands. and everything. Uh, you know. Yeah, but he doesn't use it like a gunslinger. Like he sneaks up on the motherfuckers and ambushes them. You know, and he's holding the gun with two hands too. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not a gunslinger at all. He's not looking for any drama. He's just looking to fucking uh, deprive motherfuckers of their of their bread, right? Fingers. Like there's that scene in the beginning where Donald O'Brien is going through his bag, and it's like the prissiest fucking shit, right? Yeah, it's like the prissiest fucking shit. Oh, you I drink my when, toilet water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael J. Pollard drinks his fucking uh, his, his uh, perfume, his cologne. You know, and I don't understand why we need two words for perfume. Right, it's just like dudes. It's no, what, what, what? <laughs> it, it, it should be perfume, period. But I think the only reason is to have the masculine and the feminine one. Perfume was from flowers, and cologne. oh, because the scents are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that does make sense. Well, at first, yeah, 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 when yeah, he said right. toilet right. water, I was like, did he just drink his bedpan or something like that? <laughs> you, you know that that's no, no, how no. you call that's how you call cologne in in French. It's it's toilet. Yes. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. And the, the one I take is Versace au toilette. Oh, That's toilet. my favorite one. Yeah, yeah. 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 and and basically, gentlemen, less is more. Always. Always. <laughs> In other words, you should not be smelling somebody's cologne unless you're like 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 pretty close. Yeah, because man, you know some of the fuckers. The one, you don't. You're not supposed to make some. And oh, yeah. cologne cologne doesn't fit everybody's musk. Yeah. Exactly. Another part to me that was totally hilarious was, oh, come on, Sheriff. It takes six months to mark a good deck of cards. Yeah, yeah, I, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want to – yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just tossing those motherfuckers <laughs> into the fire like it ain't You know no how day. long it takes to mark a deck of cards? Yeah, yeah. You see him go from <laughs> that to, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, just burning this yeah. fucking – Burning this shit. Racing Beatles. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it's just like you see how. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, I mean, you know, couldn't be a prissier character. And really, what the movie's about, and he is the main character, is how this hellish experience uh, changes him. Uh, I, right? Yeah. And uh, like for the better. In a lot of respects, because although he's not like an outright bastard when you when you first meet him, he seems like a pretty selfish guy, and he bonds with these people, right? Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, they're connected, but they're connected through uh, they have an emotional connection because they're all going through the same fucking hellish, biblically hellish uh, uh, experience. Yeah, so this is like a, a movie I would call harrowing. It. It's a rough watch, people. It's a rough watch for sure. Preston, what did you think of this? I oh, told you, you what I think. I think it was terrible. <laughs> I can <could laughs> see how. It, movie ever. But I can tell you, like, I can see how it it could become a cult movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have so many like crazy elements in there that it can uh, it can absolutely be a cult movie. Yeah, yeah I mean, I place it in. Uh, uh, Fulci's over, I would say I'd put it like in the mid, right? Mm -hmm. You know, at the top, of course, you've got Zombie, you've got The Beyond, you've got House by the Cemetery. At the bottom, you've got shit, Murder Rock. Uh, some of the movies he was making towards the end of his career, mm -hmm. Demonia, the movies, I mean, he, wow. Uh, Went off the deep end a little bit? He, uh -huh. he basically plunged 
harder and faster in terms of his quality than Argento did. Oh. And if he'd still been, if he'd been around, he probably would have still uh, uh, putting shit out. But he was diabetic, and evidently uh, forgot to take his insulin. And okay. some people think it was like he forgot on purpose. Mm. But it's but it's not clear. But I, I remember I was re- oh god, Hart would know this fucking guy. There's a guy named Tom Rianone. I guarantee yeah. you, fucking Hart knows this dude. Um, he was like um, uh, 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 working with a convention to be like full cheese guy, right? Oh, sure. Because people come off the plane, you want somebody that knows their way around and shit, that's taking care of the hotel for you, and just basically takes care of you, drives you around, w- watches out for you, right? Get your and hookers course, and some blow. You have a person that's a fan. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, where can I get your hope? There was a snowstorm that year. I lived lived in Manhattan at the time, right? And I'm talking like literally, I mean, you, you open the door and it's just like you would have to, fu- you had to dig your way out. I'd never seen anything like it before in my life. And uh, while this was storm was going on, uh, he had to like find insulin needles Damn. for uh, for Fulci. He'd run out of needles. And so he like th- goes through this storm and finds a drugstore and it's closed like everything else because it's a fucking snowstorm starts banging on the fucking door and a, a guy shows up and he's just like dude can you can i talk to you right and so he goes around the side opens the side door it's like yeah what can i do for you and he's like dude i know that this is gonna sound really really sus but i need insulin needles it's not for slamming heroin. It's it's because I'm taking care of this 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 horror director and, and the guy's like, really? Who? And he's like, uh, you wouldn't know him, uh, Lucio Fulci. And the guy's just like, Fulci? Hold on a second. Closes the door, <laughs> comes back, has a big fucking stack of fucking needles, puts them in his hand, and says, "I love that dude. Tell Lucio I said yo." <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> so he had his fans he had yeah. his fans he always had a fan it's bed. always hard for me to get needles like my pharmacist keeps giving me the wrong size what do you need you need to stick yourself with bro uh, testosterone you got to take testosterone oh i thought you took that orally no uh, is that a pain, in, about is a that a pain in the ass i mean there's there's three about, ways like, to take it or anything? like one you could take the shot all right. Two, you can go in once a month and get your butt sliced open. And they oh, put a pellet in there, yeah. Oh, and then and then they sew you up, and it's a oh. minor surgery once a month. Oh. And then wow. there's another one where you take a cream and you put it on you, but it's transferable to everybody around you. Wow. And pregnant women will kill a baby. So. Oh wow. my god! And your girlfriend might yeah. end up growing a mustache. And why the hell do exactly. you take testosterone? Because. <laughs> My testosterone levels were low, but once you start on testosterone, you can't like yeah, stop. It's like taking that. estrogen if you're like yeah. a uh, menopausal woman. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All I know hey is guys, I've I got to get going. Oh, sorry, Brian. Oh no, no, no. Uh, I was going to say. You doing Matt, a show tonight? Yeah, I got uh, Craig White on from uh, Soltac. You talking Send about? Send me a link. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Me too, brother. Me too. I got Not to Brian, me, just me. I'll try and hop in. <laughs> I, I gotta make I, I I gotta make up for the ass I, I made out of myself on Narwhal stream uh, yesterday. What? But, What'd um, you do? No, I got way too I got way too stoned. Oh, on like because <laughs> I hadn't you know it's the vapey vape shit and it's like new stuff and it was it was, it was let me put it this way it was stronger than I expected. But what did Matt, you do? What did you do that was so bad? I don't know. <laughs> I just sounded like an idiot. Well, it's like those it's, off or something like it's like yeah, the edi- yeah. it's like the edible shit moment. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Those man. edibles are something, nothing to mess with, dude. Like, oh God, watch dangerous. out for them shits. But yeah, Matt, tell people where they where, where they should be going. Well, if you guys want, you can come over to my stream um, in a little bit. It's um, it's called uh, Open the Gates. It's on my channel, Metal Movies and Brewskis. I'm gonna be having on Craig White. He's gonna be talking about his awesome fucking uh, uh, Soltech books. It's on fun fun my comic right now. So yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm going live in about five minutes or so. And yeah, thanks thanks Brian for having me on. I really appreciate it, brother. Got it, brother. And I'll see you guys. Never, it's never the same without you. Can't wait for the horror movie next week. Oh, uh, yeah. Minutes love, baby. ATMC. Peace.
Peace. Yeah, and don't wait till the last moment to send. Peace out, man. We'll see you soon. You know, I you, you you've noticed I've try I've gotten a little bit better, a little bit yeah. better about that shit. Yeah, instead um, instead of being about, on the about, same about day, it's two days before. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, I'll I'll try to get better. I'll try to get better. I've been I've been trying to get better, and occasionally I've been better, but I will try to get better about that, and usually uh, take care of that shit on uh, on on uh, on Sunday. But uh, yeah, so Sim, tell everybody where they can find you as. You sexy Any, motherfucker. Anywhere under Sim Ink Slayer. And uh, like I said before, Tells on Everest 2 is going to go into fulfillment pretty goddamn soon. And I'll be launching another project called Blood Hunt 2. Fuck yeah. Although that pisses me off because it means it's going to be that much longer for uh, well, Blood Hunt uh, Doc Salem <laughs> crossover. No, we already started working on it. Oh, really? Oh, god damn, man. Oh, that's going to be so much fun. That's going to be a pisser, man. I think that you guys are going to have fun drawing that thing. I, you know, it is. I, I, I am having fun doing Preston. layouts on it right now. Awesome. Uh, Preston, where can, these, you, where, where, where can these, you know, ne'er-do-wells find you? Don't really have to worry about finding me, but you can find the Hell Knight Sana page on Indiegogo. Yoosh. Yoosh. Oh, uh, do, do you have a wrench? you got to fucking drop that link, man. I don't have a wrench. What? No? Oh, I have to go on fucking YouTubes to do that shit. I'm sorry, my brother. Uh, uh, Pops, tell these people what's up. For those that don't know what's up. Everything. We got the, the Slaughterville Gaming in the morning tomorrow, Flip City tomorrow night. It just, you know, it's all action. Looked like you had fun at that convention, man. Nana actually was still looking pretty fucking cute. Dude. No, she's, look, she's I'm, huh? I'm embarrassed. I watched that short. I'm embarrassed. My hair was all going all over the place. <laughs> and shit. I'm like, Brad, why didn't you tell me to fucking run a brush through my hair, dude? What the fuck? Right? <laughs> How? So yesterday, it's like I cut off like five inches. I'm like, fucking, so it don't fly all over the place anymore. Can I tell you? Oh, oh, so, that, oh that's what prompted you to to, to, uh, to shave yes. your hair. <laughs> yes, when I look. I mean, I look just so. It it looked kind of red. That's all right. You know, ladies like that. Ladies like that sometimes. You you don't oh, realize dude. until you see yourself <laughs> in you know, especially outside in the wind. When I was talking to Mark Hard Hodges, the guy who yeah. runs uh, Grand Rapids Comic Con, yeah, 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 outside in the wind, my hair was just even with my big hat on and everything, my hair was still just. You know, and it was like, man, I got yeah, it. dude, I, I, you're not kidding. Like, I was in a fucking big waiting room with a whole bunch of chick, right? And it was hot, so I'm like, I don't do my hair, right? I'm like, I just go like this, and yeah, mm -hmm. and dude, all I see is a bunch of women going, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I told you you yeah. were sexy. See, that's the problem. It's just like everybody thinks it's because, like. I maybe I swing that way, but no, it's not my opinion. It's an objective fact that I'm just pointing out that you're. Six like, like long hair, dude. That's a yeah, they long do. Long yeah, hair. they do. They like roll like their hair. fingers through it, braid it, and play with yeah, it. Yeah, dude. I had an Asian, why, like all type. They just like, oh, hi. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Oh man, uh, everybody. Yeah, you can catch me, of course, here every every week with with uh, with my friends. Uh, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, ring a ding ding dong bell for notifications. Hook your brother up with some subs. Uh, anyway, next week is going to be the horror movie club, and I'm not sure which movie we're, we're going to be watching. Maybe another Frankenstein movie, possibly? Or Did, I don't did know. we do Jason uh, X yet? Do we do Jason X yet? I, I, I don't know if that's available. I'll, I'll, I, 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 think, I think it was, but it, 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 it never stays all the time. I love Jason. Right, right, right. That is like Dude, one of the coolest movies. I, but that's the thing. I, I was like telling Brian, too. I remember seeing it, and, like, when it came out and going, like, nah, you know what I mean? Like, comparing it to other Jason, right? But right. But went back to see it, and I'm like, yeah. Dude, that's a fuck. That's not my, my favorite fucking, one of my favorite fucking movies. It's fun. It's really, really fun. Funny it's thing like, is that hey, here, we're doing, we're doing Alien, but instead of having, like, an Alien... Jason and we're gonna have that cyborg chick trying to fight her in there. Oh, the virtual reality scene. That's no funny. the cyborg it's chick. Fun. The cyborg chick. The cyborg yes. chick when she went and he knocked her head off. Yeah. 
Ah, uh, yeah, no, that's yeah, not. Yeah, but that's you know, she turns good. around like the first time she beats him. She beats him up a bit, then he comes back in cyborg mode, and then yes. she, you know, she goes in front of him, and then she turns around. I think you should run. <laughs> <laughs> it's for some look. At every horror movie franchise, it's a fact. Every horror movie franchise at some point goes to outer space. Leprechaun, Hellraiser, uh, there's a bunch of others too, right? They all go to outer I space. Know, I, I, Out of the yeah. outer space uh, 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 horror sequels, Jason X is the king of them all. I know. I think yeah, Hellraiser in outer space was terrible. That was fucking terrible. It's, well, I actually, uh, Bloodlines, I actually really like that one. Uh, it grew on me. Uh, it, it's Traitor. a mess. You know, they had a lot of pro production problems. Anyway, wasn't it, but weren't we, weren't we, weren't we, oh, that, see, now I'm getting all cotton. I'm getting cotton mouthed. I need a little bit of a break. Uh, but yeah, everybody, uh, we'll, we'll do like a, uh, a raid on, uh, on, uh, on Matt's stream if you boys are down for yeah, that shit. Yeah. All right. Everybody, until next week, Pops, you going to take us out? I got this. All right. Until next week, everybody, peace and love and Fucking metal, I think. Mr. Chris, what up? Also, Chris Kale from Rock and Roll Band Five Finger Death Punch. Heard that you're about to launch your newest board game, Gods of Metal, where you take on the persona of different metal musicians to stop the overlords and their demons from taking over reality. I think I know a metal musician that can help you fight those overlords and those demons. That is me, Chris Kale. So, shout out to you, Chris. Shout out to all of the Laughing Rogue crew. And shout out to Gods of Metal. Uh, I will be in there taking over reality from the demons and the overlords. Chris Kale. Just like it says there on my hat, in case I forget. I do play bass. <laughs>
the future. The final frontier. It has never been so uncertain as now. AI, VR, hapticware, nanotechnology, mass destruction with a remote click. Now we are finally seeing the true potential and dangers of an ever-connected and overly policed hyper-technological world. Have we finally become the architect of our own demise? Is there still hope? Welcome to the future. Welcome to Punk Droid.